what's up my name is rich welcome back to another video i got jesse with me um I, i've been in touch with jesse for uh, maybe over two years now maybe on and off so i just heard a loud truck go by but it's cool yeah sorry i'm right on the main road <laughs> no, there's gonna be cars going by yeah so that's good because uh jesse has a retail front he sold on etsy um he's done several other different things you want to let me know how you got started yeah so i started so i I guess I started in 2017. Um, and that was like, I bought a heat press. I bought a vinyl cutter. I bought, um, just like the basics. Like the, I think those are the two main things that I started with and I just got vinyl and I was just doing like, you know, my, my friend had a company wanted some shirts. So I just, uh, I used vinyl and was starting to get orders that way. And then, uh, in the pandemic, it really started to pick up. So like I was the type of dude that was, trying everything. Like I was starting a business here, there, like tried 10 different things before something finally worked. Um, and yeah, the pandemic, it just started to pick up. I started to get more orders and then it quickly balled into like, I found a retail location and, but yeah, so it, that's, that's where it started. It started with vinyl and then I just slowly built up the business, added more, uh, equipment and then built it up from there. Was it like a cameo or a cricket? What, what kind of vinyl it, was it? Yeah, it was a cameo, a silhouette cameo four was what I was, and I still, I actually still have it in this room. Um, every once in a while, like I, I don't like to do vinyl, you know, I don't like the weed and all that. Now, obviously, uh, you level up from that, but uh, yeah, I use it every once in a while for stuff. No, I just like to hear that because a lot of people like to knock them, but you know, it's a good starting point, and obviously, no, you know, man, you've it's. Done well especially for shirts like it's you can only do 12 inches wide on the cameo four they, they have the bigger ones now but like that's usually all you need on a shirt like it's perfect if you're doing simple designs um it's just when you get to the real intricate stuff and you're like damn i gotta pick out all these tiny little pieces that's when i so i can go a little deeper into it so i started to do that and then i was like man this sucks so i looked at other options I got into sublimation. I ended up just getting and converting a sublimation printer. So I have a Epson. I don't know the exact model, but I found them on the Facebook marketplace and converted it. Um, I got into sublimation, but then I was like, damn, you can only do white shirts. So, so like the way my route has been is I, I try new stuff. I add new equipment. I hit some sort of roadblock and I'm like, okay, what's next? Like what, what equipment do I got to get so that I can do better than this essentially? Um, so the next step was sublimation. After that, I ended up getting a converted direct to garment printer. So that's again just like an Epson printer that they convert, and then that thing sucks. I still have that too. That's a <laughs> four. It's a four thousand dollar paperweight. Like I'm gonna oh, make a video man. too. This is this is on my list of videos of of uh, like should you get a converted DTG printer? D disclaimer: You should not, <laughs> because <laughs> I mean maybe some are okay, but I'm not even gonna say the brand. The one I got was not great. Um, so then. I had that converted one. I ended up getting an Epson F2100, like a legit DTG printer that I still use that every day. That's right next to me. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's, I just slowly built up, which is, I and, and I try to tell people, like, I don't care about competition. I'll tell you whatever you want to know that I know. Like, if I can help, I'll help you. Because so many people want shirts. Like, there's, it's, it's, I don't care about competition at all, man. Like, we're, you do the same thing. You've helped me out a lot. So, like, I just want to spread knowledge. You know what I mean? Like what it, you got to slowly build it up. You'll get there. You just got to try it. You just got to keep going, man. No, nah, that's already good to hear because so it sounds like your $300 cameo investment was much better than DIY DTG printer, which is like four or $5,000. Yeah, so, exactly. So, um, I heard you got started by printing your friend's company shirts or something like that. And then yep. I saw you made a video. You made $68,000 on Etsy last year. When did you get yep. into Etsy? So Etsy was probably about two years ago, maybe a little bit over two years now. Um, so I got on there and... Yo, excuse the interruption, but check it out. This video is brought to you by Everbee. Everbee is a tool that you can use to find the best products to sell on Etsy in seconds. You can try it for free with no credit card required. So all you got to do is click on try it for free and download the Chrome extension and you're already giving it a shot. So with Everbee, you can do product research, find high demand products to sell on Etsy so you can make what is trending see how other etsy listings are performing so you can make high revenue products you save time by this because you're already doing the research all in one tool grow your etsy sales by selling things that people want
Everbee is designed to help you grow your Etsy business. So make sure you give it a shot because it's free to try. I started off with terrible listings. Like I didn't know like good photos to use. Like I think in the beginning it was like actual photos of shirts like sitting on a table and they look terrible. They didn't sell too well. Um, but the, and so I started with just shirts and stuff like that. And I did like, I ended up getting a hat press too. And then I would do same thing like vinyl on trucker hats and stuff like that. Um, so I started up with little stuff like that. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just researching. But then I was actually in a Facebook group one day and a bunch of people started talking about this new product. It was, uh, I didn't, I don't know what they called it, but it was like an alignment tool. And I have mine right here. I'll show you in a second, but it was an alignment tool um, that helped you. Like if you're pressing vinyl or however you're pressing shirts, it helps you line it up. So it has, I'll show you, it has, it goes on the neck of the shirt like that. It has the center line, all that stuff. It helps you line up shirts. I saw a bunch of people in a Facebook group talking about that. They're like, Hey, where can I get this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, somebody had posted that they got one is what it was. And then literally there was like, it had just been posted. There was like 60 comments talking about, Hey, where can I get these things? So I started looking too, and you could not find them anywhere. There was a couple on Etsy. No, that, sorry. There was one on Etsy and it was out of stock. Like it kept going in and out of stock. I was watching it. So I was like, you know what? I can probably make one of these a lot cheaper. Um, and keep it in stock. You know what I mean? Like, it, like the problem seems to be like people love this thing, but it's out of stock all the time. So I went on uh, on Alibaba. I found three suppliers at first. Two of them were like, um, one of them was ten thousand. One of them was fifteen thousand. They said, "Hey, we need ten and fifteen thousand dollars to make a mold for your product." And I was like, "Hell no! Like, I'm not about to <laughs> put down ten, fifteen thousand to make a mold for this product. I found one supplier that had already made something similar and they had no mold cost at all. So they were like, Hey, well, yeah, we can do it for you. And I was like, how much to like brand it. So like I got the logo here and then I called it the t-shirt tool just so it was like some kind of catchy. Um, and then what I ended up doing was I, I made it a little bit better. So I put the left chest alignment, the one that I had seen didn't mm. have that left chest alignment there. Um, I made it rounded because the one that I had seen was like all squared off. And then I added this little hole so people could like hang it. Mm. So I just did like a couple small things, like easy to do, whatever. I was like, hey, can we make these changes? I gave them my dimensions. And then th this is the crazy part. I ended up getting these. So at the first order, I placed an order for 400 of them. There were $2 each. So my initial investment was $800. I listed them on, on Etsy before I got them. So they were in the process of making them. All I had so far was they sent me a picture of the test one that they made. So I took that test image, I put it up on Etsy and I put like the first word in the listing was pre-order, blah, 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 bro. These things immediately went crazy. So it was like a, I think it was like three weeks that they were going to get to me. So it was pretty quick. But with, before I got that first order of 400 in, I had sold 450 right around like 450. Mm. Of them. So I had sold more than I made or I had coming in. So before I even got the first order, I had to place another order. The other thing was this first order was a C shipment. So, you know, that takes longer. Yeah, yeah. So my second order was an air shipment. So I actually got my second order before my first order. <laughs> um, and But they were just started going crazy. So these were $2 each from the manufacturer. I was selling these for $35 plus shipping on Etsy. And they Man. were selling. Like they oh were going crazy. God. So you already know like that 800. I don't even know the math off the top of my head. But that I think the first month. I made like $17,000 off of just this. Dang. And so that helped me out a ton because not only was it amazing that I like, I had never seen $17,000 a month. Like, are you kidding me? That was wild to me. Um, but at the same time that helped my Etsy a ton. So like all my other listings, like obviously Etsy it's like, Oh, this person's selling stuff. Let's push some of their other stuff. So my shirt started to do better and in the process, I was learning how to make my listings better and all that stuff. So I think and I don't think I got lucky because I saw the opportunity. I was like, damn, a bunch of people want this. And I went for it. But because of these sales, it allowed all my other stuff at Etsy and like my Etsy business in general, because eventually these died down. Like right now you go on Etsy, there's 50 people selling. Yeah, these. You know everywhere. what I mean? Yeah. So when I got on it, it was just early enough where it it did really well for me. And then it just helped the rest of my stuff grow. So once this died down at that time, I was probably selling like 10, 15 shirts a day, which was enough to, you know, keep me going. And then I built it up from there. 
so yeah that, so anyway that's how i got started <laughs> <laughs> no that's cool man because uh, i know that is one thing about se if you'd like you you ship on time and you get good sales traction the more as he's actually going to focus on your actual shop you know right so just just that alone that's some good information so when it came to when it died down what happened you started focusing on t-shirts more or yeah exactly so these start to sell less i would sell like so like some one day i think my best day i sold like 200 and something of these in one single day so like mm. at the height those were going crazy but then as they start to die down like at the core of it that's what i did was i made t-shirts like this is just something that i happened to also put out that went along with it um but yeah so i started like i said i started learning i spent a ton of time like you i swear to god i watched your videos i watched like big brando um and big brando isn't even on etsy but just like he, just good knowledge i i try to get any knowledge about making shirts that i could um so I, and uh, like um, Stan, um, everyone, all the big, you know, the t-shirt dudes on YouTube, I was watching. Um, so I just started to get better at listing on Etsy. So I'd have, you know, the better mock-ups and uh, like, you know, the, the keywords, all that type of stuff. So I got better at that, listed a ton of shirts. I think I learned from you actually, um, pretty much I just wanted to list as much as possible. So I set a goal for myself to list five shirts a day. Uh, which I'll admit I didn't always meet, but I just tried to list as much as possible because I knew that helped out with the rankings. Um, so yeah, I just listed a ton of shirts. Um, another trick I learned from you, I used, um, um, come on, Google. What are they called on Google? Google Trends. Um, Google Trends. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So that was huge for me. I go on Google Trends and I would just, whatever, I would search T-shirt, shirt, T, like anything that might show the keywords. Um, and I would see what was trending that day or the last week or whatever. And I would just list it. And then every once in a while you got lucky. Like the, another product that did that went crazy for me was that Bernie Sanders meme of him sitting there in the knit gloves or whatever. I put that on a hoodie and a shirt and that went wild. I, and at that time I was actually outsourcing um, like the print on demand stuff. So I didn't even have to fulfill all those, which was nice, but the profit was less, but still like those shirts went crazy. And then, I just, whatever, I got to sit back and just get that money from print on demand. So that stuff really works well. So that that's what I did. I went with shirts. I did some other stuff here and there, um, but shirts was the biggest thing. I just listed as many shirts as I could on Etsy. So how do you think uh, print on demand weighs in, in terms of, you have a DTG printer, so what made you want to go that route? So at the time of the Bernie things going crazy, I was like brand new to DTG. And I think I've, if I remember correctly, because this was whatever, over a year ago at this point, if I remember correctly, I believe that at first I was fulfilling them myself. Like I did a few, but then they started to go crazy and I was like, I can't keep up with this. So I switched yeah. it over I, like Printful or something like that. I set it up with, um, and it's great because like even today, if I got 500 shirts that I had to DTG, that's kind of a pain. Like you got to pre-treat all the shirts and, and do all that stuff. So, and the, it's not the fastest, it's not like screen printing where you can knock out a ton at a time. Like that'll probably take days. Um, so a huge benefit is time. Like me and you have been talking about it, like off of here, like we kind of want some time back. You know what I mean? You want to spend more time with family. You want to be able to do other stuff. You don't want to be pressing shirts all day long. So POD is huge for that. But on the other hand, like I said, the profits, like, with directed garment like with the machine the ink isn't too crazy expensive if you look at it on a per shirt basis so like you're definitely making a lot more if you're doing it yourself but it's a lot of work it takes time so if you yeah. if you want it like it, if you if you can yeah exactly if you can get good with the google trend stuff and you're consistently putting out shirts every day print on demand is probably not a bad idea because that bulk is making up for your profit loss essentially um but yeah if you're selling less you, you want to probably feel fulfill, uh, fulfill them yourself so you can get more profit. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. So you're doing a whole bunch of online stuff, but then you got a retail store front. Did you do that before or after? So about a year in, I'd say when I, I at this time, I still just had the, um, the vinyl cutter and all the basic stuff, but I found a, it was a like a three car garage, like a pretty big garage. Um, it's actually right around the corner from my current store and it was available for rent. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like 
six hundred dollars a month for all of it. Um, and I was already making like decent, like I was making enough, like I'd be okay if I went with that. So at that time, I left my job. So I had, I, I think I worked at Best Buy at the time. I left my job because I was making enough to get away from that. But I also had a kid at the time, so it's kind of scary. Like you know, I got to make sure like I can do this. Um, so I got that garage, and the plan was to make that into a retail store. So I was going to like keep part of it for a work area, but then like there was a normal door and like a section I was going to make like a retail store so people could pick up and whatever shop if they wanted to locally, but it was on a back road. It really wasn't the best spot for a store. Um, so about six months into that, I just had a one year lease, but six months into that, I saw the spot that I'm in now. And this is right on the main road, as you can hear another loud motorcycle go by. But this is like a nice location. You got thousands of cars driving by every day. I'm in a small town in Connecticut, but it's still like a lot of traffic yeah. going through here. Um, so I saw this retail store and I was like, damn, that's not bad. Like the price wasn't terrible. Um, the location was great. Another motorcycle. <laughs> um, location was great. And then uh, so I just went for it. I was like, I still have six months on this lease, but I'm going to like add this spot too, because I think it'll be beneficial. Um and that, that is only like 600 square feet on that side. That's what you see through that door right there. Yeah. Um, but then the spot that I'm in now, the unit next to it was also available. So like two months in, I ended up grabbing this side too. So then what? I could expand a little bit. So yeah, so I pretty much took two stores. We actually added this door right here. That wasn't there before. So we connected them. Um, so yeah, now I have these two units. One of them is like all my equipment on one side. And then the other side is the retail store. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Like the store itself isn't crazy busy. Um, but the, from the amount of people going by every day, I get a ton of calls. So it's really about location. Like if you find a good spot, it's, it, and you're already doing decent business, it's, I'd say go for it. Cause it's been pretty good for me for sure. So what do you think is the huge difference between, you know, shifting from online? Well, I wouldn't say you shifting, like maybe even doing both. Like some people yep. may consider doing a storefront, but they, they don't want to go out and like actually try it because it is a, it's a pretty huge risk. So what yep. made you jump for it? So I think, so I think I just wanted to, to build like a more like a local presence. So everything was online. I kind of wanted to like, like I wasn't doing really anything local, except like I said, I had some friends that I was making stuff for like people that already knew me. Um, so I wanted to kind of just be in the community. You know what I mean? Like I, I wanted to have a, a place that whatever people can come and it's not just all online. I wanted to kind of make a connection. So yeah, I'd say it was just, I was already, like I said, I was already doing somewhat decent business, like enough where I was comfortable to make the leap. Like I kind of knew what I was doing at that point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's scary. I'm not going to lie. And when I got the story, it was the middle of the pandemic. So like a lot of businesses were closing. So like I was kind of like, oh, I mean, <laughs> this <laughs> might not, this might not be great, but I'm kind of just yeah. going to go for it. But if man, if you don't take risks, like you never know. I'd rather just try like worst case scenario, the lease ends and I close it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just wanted to, to go for it. But as long as you like if you have confidence in yourself, like you can make it happen, man. Like you just got to adjust like that. That's been my biggest thing is like when I started the, the game plan wasn't exactly what it is now. You know what I mean? Like you got to kind of adapt and like, if you see something working, like, okay, cool. Let's run with that. Let's build on that more. Um, so yeah, you just got, as long as you're able to adapt and, and like grow that way, you'll be good, man. You just got to go for it sometimes. That's awesome, man. So I just want to say, I guess starting with a cameo cutter, you can you can go a long way. And then my wife just texted me this random. So for anybody who's like on a budget and wants to start with a cameo cutter, my wife just said there's Gildan t-shirts at the dollar store for a dollar. So that's cheaper than you buying it from a distributor. <laughs> yeah, for real. It is. And <laughs> so and that's the, the other thing. One thing that you like, this is a, a huge lesson that I learned is like so like me and you we're making shirts all the time if we make a little mistake we're gonna be like damn that looks bad like i shouldn't sell that like whatever nine mm -hmm. times out of ten the end customer has no idea like they will never ever ever notice that issue or that mistake that you made or whatever like obviously if it's a big thing like a huge misprint whatever but like you gotta realize that people aren't doing this every day like you're gonna be like hey this next level is so much nicer than this gildan shirt 
but this person on the other end, like if you're making a brand, yes, use the nicer stuff. You want people to wear your shirt every day, whatever. But if you're selling on Etsy or something like that, save yourself some money. Like people, not only do people kind of expect the Gildan shirts on Etsy, but like they, a lot of times they don't even know the, the difference really. Like obviously you can feel the difference in some shirts, but like you, you're way more critical of yourself for no reason i I, i've come to notice like like done is better than perfect is like my biggest motto because it's like nine times out of ten whatever i'm stressing over these people are not even going to notice like you just gotta put your ego to the side and and ship that product out because like sometimes i'll put a product out and i'm I'm like damn i hate that and then i get a five-star review it's like oh okay so this person loved it like you got to realize man like you just got to do it you just got to go at the end of the day like the moral of my my business journey is you just got to go for it like yeah, i see I the store it. i went for it like you did that's all it comes down to is you just got to try it man nine 100%. times out of ten it'll you can make it work no i agree i mean you're gonna be your biggest critic and sometimes having too much knowledge is kind of uh you know it's kind of the wrong track to go to because then you're like oh there's better shirt qualities than this and there's better yeah. print print versions than this and most customers don't even know the difference between like a, a full color transfer compared to like a full color dtg print i mean yeah. they might notice it if they put it side by side and but if they received it and they're cool with it most time you're going to get a five-star review i have the white toner printer which like majority of people hate the quality print but i've shipped out yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I shipped out <laughs> thousands of them and yeah i get five star reviews so it's like yeah i didn't even mention that but that's one of the other things i tried right before dtg i got the smaller version of your printer um i forgot the, the name but yeah, yeah yeah so i i got that and like the the marrying process and all that yeah, it, just, it. it just wasn't <laughs> for me it just was not for me but that it's an option like it works for some people it is what it is for some people love it man so i appreciate you for hopping on jesse working uh the people follow you yeah, man. So first of all, I appreciate you. Like, this is this is awesome. Thank you for having me on. Um, so my YouTube, uh, it's Jesse Beck, my name, but it's spelled J-S-E-B-C-K. Um, so if you look that up, I'm put uh, like my plan is to put out a video a week. It's just it's content just like this. So like how to grow a, a, a custom apparel business and things of that sort. Um, so you got that. And then on socials, the same thing, J-S-E-B-C-K or man loud ass <laughs> uh, or uh my company is o and e customs so all the socials and the website spelt that so it's o a n d e customs that's dope man um one last thing i'm not trying to plug myself but where you, you're in the t-shirt seller pro course right yes yes okay, cool. yep so that that's actually where i learned about the uh the google trends thing so yes get rich's course because it's helpful that's one of the <laughs> things i did early on uh, when I was starting on Etsy, that's actually where I learned a lot of my stuff. Go through that whole course. It will help you. I that's a, He that. didn't tell me to say it. That's, I <laughs> promise you that's what I did. Well, I brought I still it got up. My I, just, yeah. I did bring it up because uh, you're just mentioning a whole bunch of stuff. But um, all right. So make sure y'all check out Jesse. I appreciate y'all for watching, man. That was solid, man. I really appreciate it. So come like, subscribe. We're going to see y'all next time. Peace.